dear friends we are going to discuss the topic joins actually it's a very very important topic for short notes as well as there are numerous mcq questions from this topic okay so please listen carefully okay so as all of us know joins means it is the junction of two or more bones okay and the importance of joins is they permit various movements okay yes let's move to the classification or types of joins we are going to discuss the structural and the functional classification of the joins okay which is very important okay so we can try to remember the three types of joins by this mnemonic short form okay csf okay so c is representing the cartilaginous joins then yes synovial joints and the f fibrous joints cartilaginous synovial and the fibrous joints these are the three types of joints okay fine and this cartilaginous joints are slightly mobile joints synovial joints are highly mobile or freely mobile joints and the fibrous joints there is no movement taking place that is immobile immobile joints okay and functionally you know cartilaginous joints are slightly mobile joints isn't it so they are otherwise known as amphiarthrosis amphiarthrosis okay fine and synovial joints are highly mobile joints so they are otherwise known as diarthrosis diarthrosis fine and this fibrous joints since they are totally immobile they are otherwise called as sin arthrosis so i hope you are clear about the other names for the three types of joints okay amphiarthrosis diarthrosis and sin arthrosis fine yes now we are going to see the details of all these three types of joints since each of this type of joint is a possible short notes let's see the details of all the three types of joints let's discuss the cartilaginous joints first fine so this slide is showing the details of cartilaginous joints fine so few points already we know in cartilaginous joints the bones are connected are united by some type of cartilage okay and you know they are slightly mobile joints cartilaginous joints are slightly mobile joints okay and please remember there are two types of cartilaginous joints one is called as primary cartilaginous joints and another one is secondary cartilaginous joints okay primary cartilaginous joints also called as synchondrosis synchondrosis fine and the secondary cartilaginous joints otherwise known as symphysis symphysis fine symphysis okay synchondrosis and the secondary cartilaginous joints otherwise called as symphysis fine okay so what are the differences basic differences between these two types of joints okay primary cartilaginous joints the bones are connected by hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage that is why the primary cartilaginous joints are also called as hyaline cartilaginous joints you know the reason right because they are connected by bones are connected by hyaline cartilage okay and what about secondary cartilaginous joints bones are connected by hyaline cartilage as well as fibro cartilage but the main type of cartilage in secondary cartilaginous joints is fibro cartilage that is the reason secondary cartilaginous joints are otherwise known as fibro cartilaginous joints fibro cartilaginous joints okay fine and remember the primary cartilaginous joints are temporary in nature because at certain age okay this cartilage hyaline cartilage will be replaced by bone bones in adult life okay fine what about secondary cartilaginous joints they are permanent in nature that means they are not replaced by bones the cartilage will be persisting throughout our life fine then now coming to the examples for the two types of two types of cartilaginous joints the primary cartilaginous joint the classical example is the joint or junction between epiphysis and the diaphysis of growing long bones okay 
what is that junction called as join called as actually yes epipycial plate otherwise called as uh, epipycial plate otherwise called as growth plate okay epipycial plate otherwise called as growth plate fine okay and i want you to remember some other examples for primary cartilaginous joints okay other than other than uh, epipycial plate or growth plate remember the some other examples okay one number one other than growth plate we can remember the first chondrosternal joint first chondrosternal joint okay and all all the costochondral joints all costochondral joints okay so this diagram i have taken to show you the location of first chondrosternal joint okay so this is the first costal cartilage i am marking the first costal cartilage where it is articulating with the manubrium sternae okay so this particular area called as this particular area called as first chondrosternal joint which is an example for primary cartilaginous joints fine okay and all costochondral joints right now i am marking the junction between the various ribs and their costal cartilages okay these are ribs actually first rib second rib third rib like that okay and these are the costal cartilages of the particular ribs various ribs okay so fine so the junction between the ribs and the and their costal cartilages will be called as costochondral junction or joints all these are example for primary cartilaginous fine what about the examples for secondary cartilaginous joint secondary cartilaginous yes please remember all the joints located exactly in the midline okay all the midline joints in our body belong to secondary cartilaginous joints okay so can you name some example for the secondary cartilaginous joints yes manubriosternal joint this is the area called as manubriosternal joint okay manubrio sternal joint fine okay and some other examples are pubic symphysis and intervertebral disc okay so these are the three classical examples for secondary cartilaginous joints manubrio sternal joint then we have the you can see in this diagram we have the pubic symphysis between the right and left pubic bones the junction is called as pubic symphysis okay so these are the three classical examples for secondary cartilaginous joints manubrio sternal joint pubic symphysis and ivd intervertebral disc okay intervertebral disc fine yes so so i think you can practice the simple diagram schematic diagram for for primary cartilaginous joint okay as we studied in primary cartilaginous joints okay the bones are united by what hyaline cartilage okay bones are united by hyaline cartilage this is the hyaline cartilage uniting the two bones in case of primary cartilaginous joints okay fine this is the classical example for primary cartilaginous joints okay epipycial plate or growth plate fine now this diagram shows the secondary cartilaginous joints okay schematic diagram for secondary cartilaginous joint okay so you can easily practice this diagram okay so as we told as we discussed already the bones are connected by hyaline cartilage okay hyaline cartilage as well as fibro cartilage okay as you see here the main cartilage present in secondary cartilaginous joint is fibro cartilage main cartilage okay fine so this is about the fibrous joints fine okay now okay sorry this is about the cartilaginous joints we have discussed about the cartilaginous joints so far okay so now let's talk about the fibrous joints okay so this slide shows the two or three important features of the fibrous joints and the three types of fibrous joints okay already we know fibrous joints means bones are connected by fibrous tissue isn't it and they are totally immobile immobile joints and the another name for the fibrous joints is exactly syn arthrosis they are otherwise known as syn arthrosis 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 syn arthrosis fine okay now coming to the three types of the of the fibrous joints sutures syndesmosis 
and gum forces sutures syndesmosis and gum forces these are the three types of fibrous joints fine so let's try to know few details about all the three types of fibrous joints okay sutures okay where where do we have sutures yes it it is present between the the sutures are present between the various skull bones skull bones okay so see this diagram this is a schematic diagram showing the fibrous joints okay you can easily practice this one okay so as we know the fibrous joints the bones are connected by the fibrous connective tissue isn't it fine then sutures just now i told it is present between the various skull bones isn't it so i humbly request you to uh, try to remember the various types of sutures present between the various skull bones okay so what are the four types of sutures itself yes plain suture okay serrate suture then squamous suture then denticulate suture okay so plain suture what is the example what is the example as you see here plain suture means the junction between the two bones is straight okay so remember the example for plain suture between the palatine process of the maxilla bone okay the palatine process between the palatine processes of maxillae bone we have the plain suture okay fine Pal between the palatine process of the maxillae bone okay what about serrate suture yes serrate suture the classical example is okay sagittal suture okay sagittal suture what is the location of sagittal suture yes it is present between the two parietal bones sagittal suture okay it is present between the two parietal bones fine so fine now coming to the squamous suture okay squamous suture the example location for the squamous suture is between the parietal bone okay between the parietal bone and squamous part of temporal bone between the parietal bone and the squamous part of temporal bone okay the type of suture is called as squamous suture okay between parietal bone and squamous part of temporal bone fine yes finally denticulate suture the example for denticulate suture is lambdoid suture isn't it lambdoid suture is an is an lambdoid suture is an example for denticulate suture okay so this is about the sutures okay present between various skull bones okay for example you can remember all these things the four types plain suture serrate suture squamous suture and the denticulate suture and example for all the four types of sutures fine yes so let's talk about the another type of the fibrous joint followed by sutures syndesmosis how will you define syndesmosis yes bones are connected by interosseous membrane otherwise interosseous ligaments okay the examples the three the three classical examples for syndesmosis are middle radio ulnar joint middle tibio fibular joint and inferior tibio fibular joint fine yes now coming to the gum forces okay otherwise called as peg and socket type of joint gum forces gum forces also called as peg and socket type of joint peg and socket type of fibrous joint okay the classical example is tooth lodged in the alveolar process of the maxilla and the mandible bones okay the socket is provided by the alveolar process of the maxilla and mandible bones where the tooth is lodged that is the classical example for gum forces otherwise called as peg and socket okay so gum forces you can see in this diagram the tooth embedded or lodged in the alveolar process of the maxilla bone and the mandible bone okay syndesmosis as i told the bones are connected by interosseous membrane or ligament three examples i have told you okay sutures present between the various skull bones we have discussed the four types of sutures and example for each fine yes this is about the 
fibrous joints okay this is about the fibrous joints fine right? 